The tortoise goes movie, movie. And when the teacher said, that's not a poem, there's no word in the language called movie, Professor Paul Muldoon of Princeton University said, there is now, this young chap has invented it, and he was looking for a fresh reason today. This is the most significant event in its short history so far, and I'm very grateful to Tanya for making this possible. I'm from Killarney. The very first poem in this book, which will be read in a moment, I first came across in the Mon up the road and down the Mon road when Brother Angelus read it to us in class. And how could you forget a poem that was written the night before a man was executed on the 3rd of May 1916? That really concentrates the mind if you know you're going to your death the next day. The beauty of the world hath made me sad, this beauty that will pass. Sometimes my heart hath shaken me with great joy to see a leaping squirrel in a tree or a red ladybird upon a stalk or little rabbits in a field at evening lit by a slanting sun or some green hill where shadows drifted by, some quiet hill where mountainy man hath sown and soon will reap near to the gate of heaven. Or children with bare feet upon the sands of the, some ebb sea, or playing in the streets of little towns in Comet, things young and happy. And then my heart hath told me, these will pass. Will pass and change, will die and be no more. Things bright and green, things young and happy. And I have gone upon my way, sorrowful. Handle brush and paint, but I do speak. And when I read a poem, I can see the potential of language, the beauty of language. If you imagine for a moment an old house, any old house, and then think of what T. Hume has done in one line and a half of a poem. He says, Old houses were workmen once. Sorry, old houses were scaffolding once and workmen whistling. And suddenly that old dilapidated house is brought alive again because the poet has imagined it in another time. Memory of my mother by Patrick Kavanagh. I do not think of you lying in the wet clay of a mountain graveyard. I see you walking down a lane among the poplars on your way to the station or happily going to mass on a summer Sunday. You meet me and you say, don't forget to see about the cattle. Among your earthiest words, the angels stray. And I think of you, walking along a headland of green oats in June. So full of repose, so rich with life. That I see us meeting at the end of a town on a fair day by accident, after the bargains are all made, and we can walk together through the shops and stalls and markets, free in the oriental streets of thought. And you are not lying in the wet clay, for it is a harvest evening now, and we are piling up the ricks against the moonlight, and you smile up at us, you turn up. The Cabinet Table by Paul Durkin. Alice Gunn is a cleaner woman down at government buildings. And after seven o'clock mass last night, isn't it a treat to be able to go to Sunday mass on a Saturday? To sit down to Saturday night TV knowing you fulfilled your Sunday obligation. She came back over to the flats for a cup of tea. I offered her sherry, but she declined. Why never touch sherry on a Saturday night? Whatever she meant by that, I don't know. She had us in stitches telling us how one afternoon after a cabinet meeting, she got one of the security men to lie down on the cabinet table. And what she didn't do to him, and what she did do to him, she didn't have to tell us. But she told us enough to be going on with. Do you know what it is, she says to me. No, says I. What is it? It's mahogany, she says. Pure mahogany. <laughs>